us is given by his grace pran govind prabhu ji today we are reading sri chaitanya charitamrita antelila uh, five chapter 117 onwards prabhu ji are you there yes mata i am here hare krishna hare krishna prabhu ji please accept our humble obeisances all glories to shri prabhu and maharaj please take over the call prabhu sure mata thank you hare krishna all are welcome so we are going to recite shri shri chaitanya charitamrita with shila prabhupad's synonyms translation and purport so with all the blessings of the assembled vaishnava and vaishnavis in the bodhis <coughs> guru parampara will begin by chanting three times shri shila prabhupad recommended जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय निनंद जय दैतचंद्र जय गौरभक्तवृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय निनंद जय दैतचंद्र जय गौरभक्तवृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय निनंद जय दैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त बृंद फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम वेरी थैंकफुल टू ऑल ऑफ यू एस्पेशली मदर प्रीति बिलासिनी देवी दासी अंजना गोपिका देवी दासी फॉर giving me opportunity to serve you with chaitanya charitamrita and i also appreciate all the audience devotee vaishnav vaishnavis to give you your valuable time in this hour uh, to hear what lord chaitanya mahaprabhu came to give uh, this is a very rare we take it sometime very lightly but those who are actually relishing chaitanya charitamrita or smart bhagavatam they are extremely rare soul um in prachata story fourth canto shila prabhupad mention in the purport that prachata as they went under water for 10000 years doing austerity i don't know if anybody would like to try but because we are in kali yuga it's so degraded we take it easy like a normal life now if you come from dwapara yuga you would probably faint every moment uh, kali yuga is very degraded you go walk out you don't see so any anyway, apropat says 10000 years under water is equal to 10 years in krishna consciousness movement and most of you are long time in the movement daily chanting doing your sadhana you are as good as in other ages they did for 10000 or 50000 years meditation so same maybe the absorption was different because they didn't have any mental dis- destruction like us so i appreciate those who are taking time to progress in spiritual path with relishing internally and externally adjusting life with their physical senses and the mind so with all the you notes i'm going to begin with uh, antolila chaitanya charitamrita chapter 5 and text 117 you already put it up okay we can read there aro are murkh आपोनार कैली सर्वनाश दुईत ईश्वरे तोर नाही को विश्वास चलो प्रभुपाद राइट अरे मूर्ख ओ फूल ओ यू डोंट हैव ट्रांसलेशन सिनोनी दैट्स ऑल राइट वी जस्ट रीड द ट्रांसलेशन यू आर ए फूल ही सेड यू हैव ब्रॉट इल फॉर्च्यून अपॉन योरसेल्फ for you have no knowledge of the existence of the two lords jagannath dev and sri chaitanya mahaprabhu so before i go further 
if there is a new person, I want to give a little um, brief preview. This chapter is an, entitled, translated by Srila Prabhupada, Pradumna Mishra, a Brahmana, household of Brahmana. He received instruction from Ramananda Roy, not directly, but through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, merciful glance. In this chapter, few things, uh, I would say the entire Antalila is nothing but those advanced elevated devotees, how they deal with other devotees, how they behave, and when they come to this world, how they deliver others, and as we progress, how we can relate with advanced soul and examining our own heart and how to correct it. Uh, this whole Antanila is like this. What is the proper way of chanting? Who chanted improperly? How they became proper chanter? Like this. And in this chapter, two main uh, pastimes. One is Pradumna Mishra with Ramananda Rai. Actually, it is not only Mahaprabhu's time, even nowadays, if you see an advanced devotee, sannyasi or someone, who is having a behavior with the opposite uh, sex, or their dealings with the um, other devotees not appropriate, it would disturb our mind. It's natural because we are in conditional world and we are focusing uh, through the lenses of mind, uh, which creates three things. It concocts, it speculates, and it argues. <laughs> and Mahaprabhu is teaching through Ramananda Rai that the highest satisfaction, Pradhana Mishra was disturbed, even though he is in the... Can you imagine? He is with the Supreme Lord, one side. Another side is with the eternal Brajabhashi. Visaka Devi Ramana, came as a Ramananda Rai. And he's disturbed by eternal associate. Because, not because of Ramananda Rai, because what he was projecting and the attitude he was holding. And this is what happened when we, or when I, don't have a proper attitude to respect or see the other devotee. And progression in Pradumna Mishra's case was easy because Lord Chaitanya was guiding. Do I have a guide like this? Otherwise I'll be committing offense and step back maybe a few life or few years until some advanced soul comes and help me to correct Am I looking for correction? Maybe not. Pradhuna Mishra already concluded what Ramananda Rai is. In the name of advanced devotee, he's lingering of massaging young girl's body and it was the behavior was very disturbed. Mahaprabhu says, you think I know Krishna consciousness. Whatever I learn, it's from him. He's the one. Go back again. Of course, this time he gave him a tips. You introduce yourself that I have sent you. And of course, in their de dealings, the whole discussion took place. When he came out, he completely transformed. He could not believe what he thought before. It's assumption. Most of the offense, most of the challenges in our bhakti path is assumption. What dirty things I have in my mind, I'm projecting on someone, some other devotee. And it's very difficult to progress further. So after Mahaprabhu resend him and Ramananda Rai revealed finally who he is. <laughs> this is another thing. Even with our inference, with our logic, understanding, we cannot figure it out. It is by the mercy of the devotee who reveal themselves, himself or herself. Mother Janaba had a similar 
Krishna Priya Didi also had a similar case that um, Rupa Kaviraj committed offense to Krishna Priya Didi. And Krishna Priya Didi had no fault. Only fault she had that her tongue doesn't stop chanting. Is that a fault? No. But in front of speaker, one should not keep on chanting. She said, I'm trying to control, but tongue does not stop. <laughs> Apparently. But anyway, it's the same thing, assumption. And he thought she is not an advanced devotee. She does not have a proper etiquette. Where he did not have a proper etiquette, disrespected this Mataji. As a result, he fell down. We see so many examples in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Is repeatedly telling us how to correct ourselves. But our mind is like a you know, car, a chariot, Sarotim. <laughs> so when you are riding on a car, if car is hitting the you know, road and with the bumps and other, you feel. Even though soul has nothing to do with the mind, but soul react. If the tire is like a boom, big bump, and you also move, even though you and car are two different, but so long you are inside the car, you will. So similarly, we are writing, Manorathena Ashati Dhavati Vahi. Because we are writing the mind, material mind, we, we have to be aware that mind is tricking us. So that was the first part, and the second part is beginning now, where we are deciding that uh, Bhagavan Acharya, an eternal associate. This is another beautiful point. Unless somebody is empowered to see even the fault of others, he cannot see. I, I don't mean, those, don't misunderstand that, oh, if I can see the fault in others, it means I am empowered. No, that's not what I meant to say. Mind will see the fault. But in this case that we are going to read today, discuss about um, Balaram Acharya's brother, Gopal Acharya. He was a Mayavadi impersonal. But uh, Gopal Acharya wrote a Nandislok, a beautiful explanation according to his understanding about Jagannath and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But his understanding was completely corrupted. And he expressed in a, uh, how do you say, like when you support someone, when you like someone, even a little qual good quality, you magnify. And when, you, when I hate someone, even the big quality, tremendous kindness or any great quality, I try to minimize like a tiny, just like a Kongsha. Kongsha heard the story of Kalya. And Kongsha told Akrura, how can you think this Nanda Maharaj's son is God? Just because he killed a water Marcus, water snake. He's thinking Kalya is a water snake, like a little snake on the swimming pool or somewhere. That's how Kongsha thinks. He, he heard about Govardhan Lila. This happened while he was alive. It just say across the river. He heard it. He told Akrura, how can you think somebody is God because he picked up a pebble? Pebble is like a little rock. 28 miles Govardhan mountain, he, because he hates Krishna God so much, the 28 miles he made it into little rock pebble. So this is how the mentality of contaminated soul has. Some extent I also do. So Chaitanya Charitamrita is guiding us not to fall for it. We need to wrap up our life, finish, done with this world, go back home, with as many friends and family uh, Krishna Bhakta together. And that should be the, our priority. So how this happened? So this discussion taking place here, that um, Bhagavan Acharya, his eternal associate, a coward boy, he could not see the fault with his brother. Why? 
Of course, his eternal associate, Jogo Maya, covering him. But in this case, because he loves his brother, even though his brother is wrong, 100% wrong, not even 99, 100% wrong. But because he's his brother, he said, wow, what a wonderful explanation. And all these hundreds of devotees, they say, yeah, beautiful, except Sarup Damodar. We'll find it very few uh, minutes. I'm just giving you a little preview. So then we are starting today. So then when Sarup Damodar chastised him, and why he chastised him? Because he has a compassionate heart. He wants he to be corrected, also the people influenced by him also to be corrected and they can purify their consciousness and come back to pure bhakti and go back home. Kretana Mahaprabhu came with the uh, billion dollar check to a little orphan child. Uh, so before you hand over the two years old orphan child, Mahaprabhu wanted them to uh, graduate from uh, child, uh, childhood, uh, childishness to educated. So you can, that orphan child will be free from poverty, free from no shelter. Uh, he'll have an eternal home, but two years old child need to be educated. He has to grow up spiritually and he will appreciate more. He's grateful and appreciate then when <clears throat> the billionaire will see him that he's qualified, that time he will hand over him $2 billion check. That forever, permanently, at least this life, you will no, have no poverty. But billionaire as an intelligent or Mahaprabhu will not give that check to an orphan child like us. He wants us to understand this philosophy. That is called sadhana. That is called practice, chanting, hearing, what we are doing actually, we're doing what we have a rightful ownership to obtain. Mahaprabhu is ready to give, but we will not get until we are appreciating and understanding with purified heart, thinking, willing, feeling. Then we will see the ecstasy feeling, which is superior to any other enjoyment in this world. With this note, Sarup Damodar is speaking now to Gopal Acharya, who is a Mayavadi, uh, brother of Bhagavan Acharya. He says, Are murkho apanar koili sarvanas duito ishare tor nahiko vishas. You are a fool. He said, you have brought ill fortune upon yourself, for you have no knowledge of the existence of the two lords, Jagannath Dev and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Nor have you have, nor have you faith in them. Very interesting. Text 118. Purnananda chita sarup jagannath rai tare koili jaranasar prakrita kai. Translation and purport. Lord Jagannath is completely spiritual and full of transcendental bliss. But you have compared him to a Tao, destructible body composed of the inert external energy of the Lord. When I was reading this, I remember some extent I had this contamination, but I did not boldly wrote a poem or writings or express to others. But that idea that uh, is Jagannath, Supreme Personality, Supreme Controller, Satchidananda, full conscious being, complete with Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan in one body made of wood to my material eye. How to reconcile this and actually establish in my heart? with a complete faith. So we'll discuss that. And Srila Prabhupada guiding us by this, by this purport. If one thinks that the form of Lord Jagannath is an idol made of wood, he immediately brings ill fortune into his life. 
So you can ask a question to yourself. Are you an idol worshiper? If the tendency is there, no, 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 no. If you say no, you have to explain me scientifically. Krishna consciousness is scientific. How it is not an idol? <laughs> Immediately brings ill fortune into his life. According to the direction of the Padma Puran, Arche Vishnu Siladhi Jasravanaraki Saha. Anyone who considered the deity in the temple to be made of stone or wood is a residence of hell. Thus, one who thinks that the body of the Lord Jagannath is made of matter and who distinguishes between Lord Jagannath's body and his soul is condemned. For he is an offender. A pure devotee who knows the science of Krishna consciousness makes no distinction between Lord Jagannath and his body. We have body, we have mind, and I, the soul. Krishna consciousness teaches us the need, we have to first assess the need of the body mind and the soul as a servant, lover of Krishna, when it is aligned harmoniously with Krishna consciousness is the highest happiness you can experience. Now here it says very interesting, a pure devotee who knows the science of Krishna consciousness makes no distinction between Lord Jagannath and his body. He knows that they are identical, just as Lord Krishna, his soul are one and the same. When one's eyes are purified by devotional service, performed on the spiritual platform, one can actually envision Lord Jagannath and his body as being completely spiritual. So the Prabhupada says one time, I'm just throwing all those questions we discard that you cannot offer any material things to Krishna because he is spiritual. So see what you offer every day, how, how it is material or spiritual and how you're going to offer it. The advanced devotee therefore does not see the worshipable deity as having a soul within a body like an ordinary human being. There is no distinction between the body and the soul of Lord Jagannath. For Lord Jagannath as Satchidananda Vigraha, just as the body of Krishna is Satchidananda Vigraha. <laughs> so then the question is, we have, now Prabhupada put this here, living entity. So we have a material body, material mind, and the soul essential, is spiritual. So what we are trying to do through the sadhana, we are changing our consciousness. What does that mean? It means we are spiritualizing our consciousness. It means how it is connected with Krishna and with that relation, we are offering the body, the mind, and of course the soul. Then, we become spiritualized. Is Jagannath deity spiritualized or spiritual? Spiritual does not need spiritualizing. Our body is not spiritual. It requires spiritualizing. So it's a big difference. Even though Jagannath deity apparently made of wood, Daru Brahma, then Prabhupada writes, there is actually no difference between Lord Jagannath and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But the ignorant poet from Bengal applied a material distinction to the body of Lord Sri Jagannath. Om Jnanati Mirandhasa Genanjana Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Gena 
तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोविष्ट स्थापित जेन भूतले जयम रूप कदा मह्यम दधातीश पदातिक वंदेहम श्री गुरु श्री जुत पद कमल श्री गुरु वैष्णवाश्चरूप सागर जात सगन रघुनाथ नितम सजीव सा दैत सावधूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य दीव श्री राधा कृष्ण पाद सगन ललिता श्री विशखा नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात सामीति नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषुखवादी पाश्चात देश तारिणे पंचाकू वैश्य कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावने वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नेतानंद शिवासादि गौर भक्त बिंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल व्हाट इज आवर अथॉरिटी हु इज आवर अथॉरिटी आवर अथॉरिटी इन दिस डिसिप्लिक सक्सेशन दैट वी फॉलो वी हैव वॉलंटरली एक्सेप्टेड एंड continuously following nicely attentively chaitanya mahaprabhu is our main authority and shrimad bhagavatam through the eye of shila prabhupad his purport we can see the whole parampara very nicely chaitanya mahaprabhu told in chaitanya charitamrita 17 chapter nama vigraha swarup tina ek rup तीने भेद नाही तीन चिदानंद द लॉर्ड्स होली नेम हिज फॉर्म हिज पर्सनालिटी आर ऑल वन इन अदर वर्ड्स लॉर्ड जगन्नाथ नेम और चैतन्य महाप्रभु नेम चैतन्य महाप्रभु फॉर्म और जगन्नाथ फॉर्म और कृष्ण फॉर्म एंड दे आर ओरिजिन पर्सनालिटी इन द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड आर ऑल सेम वन सबस्टेंस not two substance we have three substance in this body we are trying to get out of the body con- bodily conception to become body but the supreme lord they are already they are the body krishna is his body krishna doesn't have a soul krishna doesn't have a mind krishna doesn't have intelligent the way we think of material because our mind and our intel material intelligence is different than the soul different from the body in the physical body but in krishna he has a mind but his mind is him his mind is the body and the body extend to the mind body extend to the intelligent body like that the so one substance not to separate but in material condition mind intelligence these are all separate separate elements so mayavadi this gopalacharya in this connection mayavadi philosophy what they teach we should remember that the ultimate truth is impersonal so this is how we check whether you have a faith or not what is your belief ultimate truth if you say well ultimate truth is impersonal there is actually devotee after 35 years he said but actually we worship dd isn't ram govindadas that uh, once we go to spiritual world 
we just you know there is no very get is until god comes to here krishna comes here and he makes a big playful pastimes and this is a wrong conception krishna has a eternal dynamic activities full time in spiritual world he also has a deity form in the spiritual world both one is called mantra upasana mai lila another is called sarasiki lila astakali lila astakali lila or sarasiki lila means god is dynamic has a beautiful past time he has a home he has a relative he has a friend and millions and millions and he's fully enjoying everybody is happy enjoy he also has a form just deep alol chandakal asadaban mallabansi ंगल when you are so shock of happiness you become like a pillar stamba one of the sakti bab that's ecstasy so krishna has that in other in sarasik lila radharani is active but in the mantra upasana mai lila that's why we give importance to our guru why because through guru we connect to mantra mantra upasana mai when the connection become mature then we can enter into the other domain so mayavad philosophy they teaches that ultimate truth is impersonal and that therefore krishna in fact all personal identity is temporary and unreal madhacharya <clears throat> spoke strongly against this idea not only do krishna and all of us possess eternal identity but because krishna is the absolute truth he is fully present as the deity in the temple to accept our worship you ever wonder nectar devotion has 32 offense in relation to the deities then prabhupad added another 32 of course we put us with Just translated. He's like he's sixty-four. You can't even have a breath, bad breath. You can't even have a hiccup. You know, so many little, 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 little. You can't go enter into temple with the red or blue cloth. Uh, ring the bell before you and so many. You cannot touch a dead body and come to temple. All these rules, regulation. Ramana Jacharya, out of compassion, he said, "If you have four things, you develop. You can easily nullify of all the offenses." And it begins with gratitude, my Lord. Goloka eva nibhasati akilatma bhuto govinda madhi purusham tamaham bhajami. Prabhat quote this verse so many times that you live always in the eternal abode. but seeing our deplorable condition you have descended in this deity form this attitude very important if the pujari dresser or anybody don't have the offenses those offenses will strike and they're fine they are in the temple doing puja all of us and they went on they're not feeling well with this coming offense you are with the lord dress the deity for half an hour one hour you come home you feel lonely are how can is possible the supreme absolute who is all pervasive you are dressing you are like a literary touching his body and everything how can you feel lonely offense so of course th- that doesn't mean you know we have to live with a fearful life no we have to live with the humility gratitude otherwise those offense will be there always 
they will not leave us alone. It is important. Madhacharya says, Eka hai keval abda ita nirasan, Krishna murti jani tahara sevan. Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes in the Bhagavad Gita. That uh, Madhacharya, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took two things from Madhya Sampradaya. One is ultimate defeat, completely smashed, killed, destroyed, Mayabad conception. It's called uh, Mayabad Sata Dosen. I don't know in English, maybe it's there. Uh, yeah, I think so. Somebody translated. I remember I used to see that Bengali one. Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur put it out. Hundred falls of Mayabad. <clears throat> then, uh, second one was Krishna Murti Nitta Jani. You have to have a strong uh, faith. What do you mean? You maintain a belief. How do you know you have a mother who loved you a lot? How? How do you believe? How much can I pay you for you to forget that you had no mother? But that's not possible. Why? Because you grow up. We have to grow up with Krishna in our day-to-day -day life. Not out of duty, like a job. That's okay. Job is not bad. But you're really not in love with the, with the work and factory or the owner of the factory. Like that. You just do it because you need the money or whatever. Similar, but with your family, you love them. When you get sick, you're not going to tell the boss or the worker or employee, Please help me, I have a fever. No, you go home. Your children, family, your wife, your husband, they love you, they will take care of you. Similarly, we have to develop, there's a difference. We have this light, both, we see that. Our personal friendship, relative versus outsider. So most of the time we have relationship with Krishna like outsiders, there's a duty bound. I need to chant, otherwise I'll not feel good and I'll disobey my guru or I'll... these are duty bound. We have to be in love with Krishna. Out of love, we will progress. The impetus within us has to come that way. So when one um, Guru Kuli, uh, I remember asked, how come there is no uh, Krishna temple in America before Prabhupada came? Uh, the simple answer is nobody invited him. Krishna would come, Krishna is in the heart. But Prabhupada invited, so he came. Now every city, almost every big city has a temple at least, and devotees, because Prabhupada invited. Prabhupada taught us how to invite the Lord. Uh, it's called Prana Pratista. You would not go to somebody's dinner, dining table and say, I'm here to eat. Who are you? <laughs> well, first of all, you have to enter into the house. So like this. So we can uh, uh, think that uh, to have a strong faith in the deity, first thing we have to do, we have to examine our heart. Do we have an under guidance? On our own, we should not proceed. Do we have a guru? Do we have a shelter of a senior Vaishnava, Vaishnavi like that? If we do, then your deity worship will progress. The present day worshiper in India, I remember recently, last two years, I started going to India, that uh, they do whether it's a Shiva Puja, Durga Puja, Ganesh Puja, Sun God Puja or Vishnu Puja, but their worshiping of this Pancha Upasana it's not a Vaishnava worship. It's not Bhakti worship. It's Gyanakanda. Such person engage in the devotional service, yes. But how to, how to bring them? If they can hear first, not worshipping deity. First hear from the Vaishnava. And then they take shelter to chant the holy name. And then they will uh, sometimes even Mayavadi does. In Jagannath Puri, I saw in uh, what is that called? Purushottam Mat. They chant, they uh, do worship, but what's the purpose? 
we inquire is for liberation. Kobindev says, Diyamanam na grinnanti binamat sevanam jana. Kobindev told to his mother uh, that even if I give Diyamanam na grinnanti, they do not want my devotee, they do not want uh, liberation. Why? Because they are in love only in service, devotional service. By going back home, spiritual world is not our first goal. Our goal is to engage and we have to have a under guidance, means a senior devotee guiding us. <clears throat> Question may come that when we, when the Mayavadis, or let's see if we have a little Mayavadis, when we offer something to the deity, the deity form of the Supreme Lord, will it bring to the highest spiritual benefit ultimately? Well, if our intention is just for liberation, answer is no. Even though might be following the Pancharati Vidhi and whatever the rules, regulation in Veda say this. Why? Because they don't, do not think of the Lord's form is eternal. This is the biggest fault. So those who are worshiping deity, they should always think, Lord is a person, the deity is a person, like I am a person. Person means I have a preference. I have a character, I have a quality. I have a liking, disliking. God also has, he's a person, supreme person. And that form, that form of the Lord deity is a person and eternal. These two, they don't have. Therefore, they are, even though they are worshiping the deity form, and we see, but they will not bring eternity just by worshiping with that attitude. Somebody may say that, well, because that form is relevant to the eternal form, why can't it give us some eternal truth by worshiping? <coughs> this logic, very subtle difference, very subtle. It is the consciousness that they hold in their heart. because they don't believe the eternal form, because they do not see the eternal form through the eyes of Shastra, their relationship, even they may cry for the deity. Ram Das Biswas, he would glorify Lord Ram Chandra's pastime and he would cry for Ram. And Raghunath Bhatta introduced him to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Mahaprabhu ignored him. So after a few days, they, he approached again different associate. Can you approach Mahaprabhu about Ram Das Vishwas? He cries for Lord Ram. He, he narrates 24 hours a day about Ram, uh, Charit, Ram Lila, like this. So Mahaprabhu, when he heard from the associate, they are asking, can't you give a little association or give a blessing to this Ramdas Bishas who has so much love of Ram? Mahaprabhu says, well, you can, if you are so compassionate to him, then you can live with him. I'm leaving, I'm not coming back. Then they thought, okay, this is serious. This is serious. So they investigated. Why are you crying for Ram? Oh, he's so great, he's so pure. Supreme Lord, okay, what is your intention in that relation when you think of Ram? I just want to merge in his body. It's like a, a child is telling mother, mother, do you love me? Of course, mother will say, yes, of course I do. Then give me this deadly poison. No, I cannot. That means you don't love me, mother. Well, love cannot be judged by child calculation. Child may demand that poison. But Prabhupada says, this is one thing mother will never give, that poison. Because she cares, but the child cannot see. So Mayavadi's approach to God is like this. 
it does not please God, rather it strikes the God's body when they chant. Because they have such a horrible mental attitude. So Lord's form that they worship, in the beginning Lord's form is manifested within the individual spirit soul. Now, now let's see how the deity, first of all, in the origin, even though <laughs> deity worship supposed to be Dapare Purichajayam, Krite Jodhayato Vishnu, then Tretaya Jajatam Mokhe, Dapare Purichajayam, in Dapur Juga, Purichajaya supposed to be deity worship. But Prabhupada writes in the purport that actually deity worship began in Treta Juga because even though it is meant for Dapara, uh, because see, uh, the sages, advanced soul, they saw the common public, they lost the respect to the Vaishnavas. They don't, even in America, sometimes I see some advanced sannasi pass by in the temple. Some folks are not trained to respect the senior devotees. It is a good fortune that we earn just by bowing down. Whether it's a pandemic, but you can still bow down, you know, bend your head with folded hand. It is necessary for our own softening heart. So let's discuss how originally deity manifested. So Prabhupada right, because they lost that respect, the sages immediately started worshiping deities. So they say, oh no, they're losing respect to wise devotees. Now they have no way to get out. Even in Treta Juga, can you imagine? 75% are religious. Treta means 75% religious, supposed to be. And 25% are bad. Kali Juga means 75% are bad or non religion, atheist. 25% is good. But it was reversed in Tata Juga. Even then, seeing this, so they started, according to Prabhupada, they started introducing deity worship. Because if they have a deity worship, like, like Upendra Mishra, um, in the beginning we discussed uh, that how he had a faith on Lord Chaitanya, but he didn't have a faith on Ramananda Rai. But because he had a faith on a lot of devotees, they have a faith to be honestly, on deity, some extent, not full faith, cannot have full faith. Full faith means you respect devotee. But devotee, they just ignore, it's as if it's not a big matter. There's so many devotees standing, they don't even say Hare Krishna, they just pass by, but they go to temple, they fold their hand. Why? Because that's where they are. They see God is exist, that's all important. They cannot see the same God that they are trying to approach is in the heart of those devotees in the temple or anywhere those devotees are glorifying the Lord. They are holding the same deity. And it's more benefited if they could see because they can, through that devotee, they could approach Lord faster than in the altar. How the deity manifested? The deity form worshipped by the Vaishnavas is not like that of Gyani, impersonalist, or in Bengal I saw also, everywhere they have their, in their house. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Some house is like, you have a nice bedroom for a king and queen, I mean, man and woman. But for the deity is under the stairs, it's just like a little, as if like, okay, we have to do it, we have to do it. Just keep him a little covered and then we'll open in the evening or morning and like it. But for themselves, very nice bedroom, very nice bathroom, very nice kitchen. But for the deity, little jar with a batasa, uh, some kind of candy, little, and it's like a little curtain. Of course, it's not everywhere, now it's changing. Uh, by the influence of the devotees, now motto, and it's wonderful. Jayapataka Maharaj Marsi is doing such a wonderful service through this Bhakti Bhiksha that actually is changing the heart. 
and people understand, no, Krishna is more important than myself. Devotees, senior devotees are more important than myself. What is that means? They are already in Madhya Madhigan, one who sees like this. Now, the form of the Supreme Person of Godhead, first of all, all powerful, all powerful, eternally, uninterruptedly, endowed with six opulences incomplete. We have to be fully aware of those six opulences. And that form is eternal, filled with knowledge and bliss and feelings for the devotees. That is the Lord's form that all the senior, sincere devotee always meditate and worship. Now in the beginning, that Lord's form manifests where? In the heart, within the heart of individual sadhaka, senior, sincere sadhaka. First, from spiritual world, Golok Vrindavan, it manifests where? In the heart. Then the Lord's forms appear in the living entity's heart. Then he explained this to a painter, sculptor, or someone. Say, can you carve a deity form? Srila Prabhupada said, our life in the material world should be, the material world is like a dead wood. And the devotee is like a sculpture artist. If he can carve the dead wood into a deity, your life is success. It's a beautiful metaphor Prabhupada gave. So, when that Golok Vrindavan, Golok Poti, Radharani and all, they manifest themselves in the heart of the devotee, who are very advanced, and they see that form. Now, then they explain, but it is not possible to express the full meaning. They verbalize because their emotion blocks them. Something comes out, something stays in. Like Jagannath, Krishna became so ecstasy that he literally melted in separation. But when you see a cloth has a Jagannath face, then how can he be supreme absolute? Are it is not the cloth is supreme absolute. It is not the painting supreme absolute. It is the Krishna that took the form of this completely blissed out. When Rohini Maya was expressing to all these queens, that is, you'll see in Jagannath Puri, they just have a just face of Lord. This is a form of Lord, like this. So first manifest in the heart, then they express, verbalize, then the sculpture, they make it, but that doesn't mean the deity appeared. Then the person who has the Lord in their heart, they see the Lord. Then they start projecting this on the deity. They invite the Lord to accept the offerings through that form. That is called in a shorter version, Pranapatista. If somebody made a beautiful marble or wood or something, that doesn't mean that's deity. Deity means that advanced soul who invites the Lord from, their, from Golok to their heart to this form. That form start accepting the offerings. And you can hear many that Prabhupada came to see the deity and he's looking. And one Sannasi told me personally, he was trying to see what Prabhupada seen in the deity. He cannot see. He's saying, and then Prabhupada is like a mischievously looking and talking. And like, he says, what's going on? What, what is doing? I mean, I see his expression in the face, but we cannot relate. It's overwhelming. So then he came nearby just to hear what Prabhupada is talking. Oh, he said, I'm glad, my Lord, they're taking care of you. You got a beautiful bedding. And he could not hear Lord's talking, but he's hearing Prabhupada's talking to them. So you must be taking rest enough. And you can hear when another time Prabhupada says, 
why the deity looks so tired? And devotee is thinking, how did he see that deity looks tired? So then he immediately called in that temple and he called the pujari and said, you're not giving rest to the deity? Oh, oh, we didn't know that. We have to put them rest? He said, yes. You must make a beautiful bedding and you must put a nice pillow, bolster, you know, bed sheet, everything. They rest. And then after some time, Prabhupada looked at all. They look now very nice, happy, they're joyful. Like in Radha Govinda Temple, New York, Prabhupada has uh, so many remarks that they're eating very well. And the Pujari said that they, even their outfit doesn't fit, like they have to add some cloth or make a new outfit. Prabhupada said, that's a good sign. You are feeding them very well. It is supreme absolute truth. It is the attitude, devotional attitude makes the. So then what happened when that senior devotee, sincere devotee who is seeing the Lord in their heart, just like Prabhupada was, Hansudut Maharaj tells a story, Kopil Muni Prabhu, who was a sannyasi before, he tells me this story that uh, Hansudut Maharaj, he asked Prabhupada, you just pluck the fruit and you start eating. You, you're supposed to offer it. And I'm glad they asked Prabhupada like this. Prabhupada said, yes, I did offer. He said, where is the deity? He said, for a sannyasi, deity is in the heart. For a grihastha, deity is in the altar. Sannasi means they are carrying the deity. Otherwise, why they, why they are, unless the Guru ordered them, they should not take sannas. Sannas means they see the Lord in their heart. Abhayam satta samsuddhi yena joga bevastiti. These are the pre-qualifications. 16 chapter text 1, Prabhupada writes. Abhayam satta samsuddhi yena joga bevastiti. These are required, these three things for an advanced soul. So then when they, those advanced soul goes to a temple, then they see their Lord in their heart and they see the installed deity. Then through that Lord, when they offer something, aruti or other, their deity in their heart blends, merge with the deity in the altar. Then they worship. They say, oh my Lord, you have come in this form. If they have a Bal Gopal, they will say, Bal Gopal, you became so big now, beautiful. You have a, you have a girlfriend, Radharani. And if they are Kishore Kishori worshipper, then they see the Bal Gopal deity. They will say, oh, when you are a baby, this is the form you have. They see their own deity, March. This is how the advanced devotees see. Now, of course, somebody may say, we may not see the difference in our in external action of those two kinds of worship. <coughs> it is not the two kinds, it is just the faith they have. It what creates the atmosphere, spiritual. And their attitude, their etiquette, in relation to the other devotee, other living being, and with the Lord, shows where their consciousness are, whether it is completely spiritual or becoming or little bit. That's why behavior is a big deal in Vaishnava culture, because behavior shows where our consciousness dwelling in. <clears throat> If somebody from outcast, that question was like, somebody is a Muslim, Prabhupada initiated some Muslim uh, born body. One of them was Ravanari Prabhu. He's actually, his, his father is a, one of the big Molla in Mecca. Anyway, he was very big. I met him once. It's very nice. He had this uh, original dress and then he met Prabhupada and got initiated. But he's very cautious because people may, Try to, you know, there could be some fanatics don't like this. Anyway, he was so somebody raised the question: How can he worship the deity? He's outcast like this. No, he's not worshiping as a outcast born. He's worshiping as a Vaishnava. 
he has a guru, he's following his instruction of his guru, so he's qualified. Like this, we see everything. Uh, you remember Pitu Prabhu mentioned one time that, uh, <laughs> that uh, he was giving class in Africa and he says, Prabhupada is so merciful, even uh, the purport was about Rakshasa, even Rakshasa, man eater, they are joining in the temple now. Not everywhere, but there are some man eaters still exist in Andaman Island. So after the class, the head pujari came. I won't say the name because he's a very nice devotee, met him, wonderful devotee. And he said, Can I talk to you? He said, You know, before I became devotee, he's a black uh, African body. Very advanced devotee, very sincere, serious soul. He says, my grandfather, when he died, I remember my father put a hook on his back and made a circle until he's dead and then we ate his body. That's our ritual used to be. We are, we are man eater in that sense. But of course, I got shelter of uh, Ishkan Guru and now I'm trying to serve as a Vaishnava servant. So this is a biggest fortune. And yes, Prabhupada's movement is spreading and attracting demons, Mayavadi, impersonalists. Prabhupada himself said, there's so many Mayavadi now joining in our movement. Wonderful. But we don't look at the external, where they come from. We look at their transformation. How they are so advanced. How they are so advanced. Well, time is up and it, there is so many things to discuss. And I was thinking like um, some question may arise, you know, uh, like for an example, in, in my mentoring to the candidates, so we were discussing, how can we understand the material things like stone, marble, wood, ghee, flowers, Indeed, our very own bodies can be used in transcendental service of the Lord, since Prabhupada said that. So those are the questions. And of course, we found many beautiful answers. And uh, sometimes even we ask the question that uh, we create the question. How is the body of a pure devotee is non-material? How to understand? Those are also deity. How can we understand these since they appear to be composed of material ingredients and affected by material laws? How is the deity of Srila Prabhupada and deity of Krishna? What is the difference? And what is the similarity? And there is a recently uh, Rajanandan Prabhu, he put a, uh, it's in the YouTube, you can read uh, Srila Prabhupada's memory by. Rajendranandan Prabhu. He gives a beautiful story that when he was with Prabhupada, when the deities are installed in Hyderabad temple, I'm paraphrasing, that some South Indian Brahmana came. And Srila Prabhupada had told Joshodanandan and Achyutananda Swami that these are real Brahmins. Uh, they are very orthodox, must be treated nicely and give the facility. So when they came, they were discussing that when spiritual master is on the planet, his deity, Prabhupada's murti, they are talking, is not to be installed in the temple. So in that South Indian Brahman, his name is Sampat Kumar Bhattacharya, heard this, that Srila Prabhupada's deity were going to be installed in Bombay, Vrindavan, and slowly, slowly to other places. There was no deity of Prabhupada at that time. Then Srila Prabhupada uh, invited him to come and see him. So then uh, Prabhupada allowed him. And as he came, then uh, <clears throat> he was giving all this evidence from different scriptures that uh, Maharaj uh, is addressing to Prabhupada that uh, when people come to temple, your center, already Ishkan became so popular at that time, that they see you deity, they will offer their prayers, they will touch your body, 
and they want to give all their suffering. And because you are alive still, uh, uh, through those murti, you're going to get all those and you're going to suffer. It's tremendous. That time Prabhupada was sick, didn't eat for almost a month. He was very sick. And one time he expressed, oh, I took too many disciples out of humanity, he expressed like that. So question is, when Prabhupada was asked like this, Prabhupada gave a beautiful answer. What did Prabhupada say? He says, don't you understand why I have come? When Bhattacharya heard it, he folded his hand, he stopped talking, and he went Parikrama to Prabhupada three times, and he left. So we are very fortunate, extremely fortunate, that Prabhupada is so mercifully uh, came to purify and give us opportunity to serve. Otherwise, it would be difficult. So in conclusion, I'm going to end with this, that <clears throat> our idea of becoming Krishna conscious is not like we jump over the you know, material world and all the problem and complication is like out. Well, now we reach God, not like this exactly. <laughs> Spiritualists don't want to get caught in this broken world. We have that idea. And if we rush into the world to impulsively enjoy its pleasures or presumptuously fix things on our own, we get entangled. We contemplate within our head Every day, I'm sure, all the devotee does this. And that's good, because adjustment is the sim symptom of a maddhamodhikari. You are advancing, so you are adjusting constant. I don't want to think this. I don't want to do this. I will do this. Those two quality are most prominent. What will I do that will bring pleasure to Krishna? What I will not do that will bring pleasure to Krishna? With the idea that God, Krishna, is entirely separated from the world is not a good idea. We need to love Krishna while we are here in the world. That is necessary. Krishna created this world for us. I repeatedly saying this. The world comes from Krishna, this America or, or whatever, this planet is not created by somebody else. It is coming from Krishna. It's meant to serve as area for the soul like me who are distanced from Krishna to come closer to him. And this is the lesson of Bhagavad Gita. And Prabhupada repeatedly said that Krishna is so concerned about this world that he personally descend in Dwapar Yuga, in Kali Yuga as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Why? To give us that access to revive our dormant love, to reestablish what is our duty towards him. Social and spiritual order, both. And this way, if we follow, then we will arrive by becoming completely spiritualized. Therefore, we need to serve Krishna in this world, within our family, whatever community we have, by creating resources for engaging with the Lord in a way that spiritualizes human consciousness. When we face the world's challenge purposefully, we also develop and demonstrate the earnestness of our devotion. In the crucible of the world's challenge, our love for Krishna, for Prabhupada, crystallize from amorous sentiment to resilient dedication. Oh, I forgot to do this. Doesn't matter. Keep on going. Oh, I got sick. I can't. Keep on going. Take care of your body. Because this body belongs to Krishna now. You have to take care such a way so you can serve. 
That kind of dedication is required. Dedication doesn't mean you don't get sick. Dedication means in the midst of sickness, you are still thinking it's all Krishna. So the Krishna consciousness tradition declares the world is meant to be offered to Krishna. This means that we work in the mood of worship using our best talents and resources for Krishna's service. In returning, I will end with this note. What is belongs to Krishna, gives to Krishna. Not in rejecting, it's as a mundane. Our spirituality becomes whole, complete. Takes us to the whole Krishna. So we should always think we'll reach Krishna not by rejecting the world or family or, or whatever peoples, but by loving Krishna in, through, with the world, with the family, with the community like this. Gaur Pramanandi Hari. Any question? Reflection? Mother? Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for your beautiful class. Is there any question or comment from Prabhuji? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you so much for the very inspiring class. Prabhu, I just had one question. Uh, wasn't this... Um, not really Gopal Acharya, it was a different uh, Brahmana devotee from Bengal, right? Because the Gopal yeah. episode... is actually cousin of uh, Bhagavan Acharya. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you very much, class. Hare Krishna Prabhu. <clears throat> Thank you for the Hare class. Krishna, <laughs> As usual, very, very informative. Um, a couple questions. Um, one is, you know, you asked, um, I don't know if I should say hypothetical question or a question that someone might, may ask, you know, what's the difference between Prabhupada's murti and the murti of you know, Radha Krishna. So, of course, we yeah. know that um, Prabhupada is Jiva. You know, different category from from Krishna. But what would your answer have been to that question? Mm. Very thoughtful. Very good. Thank you. That's why I narrated the story of Rajan Nandan Prabhu. Srila Prabhupada actually answered that question in a morning walk when a disciple asked, is the jiva, when is Krishna conscious, is he jiva? He's still jiva, isn't Prabhupada? Prabhupada said, well, if the iron is in the fire, is he still iron or fire? So one devotee says, he's iron. He said, go touch it. Oh, no, no, it's fire. How can we touch when iron is in the fire? Says, so some idea he has given that we can relate. Means Prabhupada is, who is Prabhupada? He's 100% Krishna conscious. So whether it's a jiva or not jiva is not relevant in this case. When we worship him, and he exhibited that, that through his murti he can hear us our prayers. So he is Krishna conscious, he is Krishna conscious, not consideration of jiva or not jiva. Because we can never understand the position of jiva. What is jiva? The word jiva means one who has life, conscious. Prabhupada said, first we have to become conscious, then Krishna conscious. So if, when someone is full Krishna conscious, like Prabhupada, then he's not, you're not going to get anything of jiva. You'll get only Krishna conscious. 
So in that sense, it is like Krishna's. And another way to look at it also, Jiva Goswami Path says, that they live on the level of fourth di dimension. Conditioned soul lives in a three dimension. Sattagun, Rajagun, Tamagun. They live on the fourth dimension, Suddha Satta. Sattam Vishuddham Vasudeva Sabditam Jahayate Puman Apabrita. Apabrita means uncovered. Because they live on that stage, and if you have a access, you can offer something to that person through the photo. Because he exists in Suddha Satta means they pervasive contact. They can take it from the photo, to the photo. That's not possible for a conditioned soul. That is correct. I may be crying for my son or my uh, mother or someone. If, if nobody tells them, they will have no clue. Unless they are very advanced yogi, maybe they have some kind of, but that's not the case. So even that, but when we talk about pure uh, goodness, pure goodness is all pervasive. Just like Prahlad Maharaj saw Nishingadev in the pillar, but Hiranakashipu did not see Nishingadev in the pillar. So question came, why did Prahlad Maharaj say he's there, he's everywhere? What does that mean? Because it's pure goodness. Pure goodness means everywhere. And when you have access of Prabhupada, he is also everywhere in that sense. I'm not saying that he is God. No, but he, you can have access when you have a connection. I think I mentioned this also before. Dhanishwar Prabhu, one of his disciples, he lives in Orlando. He still has that letter he carries. He asked Prabhupada, how do I know that you're accepting when I'm offering something through your photo? He says, Prabhupada replied that I'm always with my Guru Maharaj and I see him. And Prabhupada writes even in the purport of Bhagavatam that my Guru Maharaj is delivering people his Krishna consciousness by traveling in the Western world. Where Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur travel? He never even left outside India. But Prabhupada saw him traveling in his heart with him. And one of his god brothers, Shilo Siddhar Mara, says, we see Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, our Prabhupada, is now preaching through AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami. And Prabhupada says this very heavily. He said, I am always with my Guru Maharaj. So when I offer something, he takes. And you can do the same thing. So that means it is individually us, how our attitude, how our approach in a pure form, uh, connecting to the Prabhupada, then he will act like that. I hope that gives you some idea. Yeah. Um, um, when you say that, maybe you were speaking more figuratively, I don't know, but when you say that, you know, here we exist in three dimensions, but pure devotees, they have the fourth dimension. So how, what, what are the four dimensions? that you're referring to? The three modes. Uh-huh. Just like if somebody, <clears throat> if somebody uh, just all of a sudden popped with a deadly weapon, those who are in Tamagun, they will think, how can I escape? How can I escape? What can I do to escape from him? Means that person is influenced by the modes of ignorance. That person will not think, oh, I am in the ignorance. The person will naturally act because he exists on that consciousness, tamasic consciousness, ignorance consciousness. They are escaper, they are ignorer. People who ignore and escape, they are on the tamasic level. Of course, we don't judge them, but we must know. Krishna gave three chapters in Bhagavad Gita. 14 chapter, 17 chapter, 18 chapter is all about discussing. Like, so we can introspectively, we can examine our consciousness. And if the deadly weapon guy is there and said, I'm going to kill him. 
that is Rajagun influence. And those who are in Sattagur, they will immediately take shelter of Krishna. Mother <clears throat> Joshuda is a perfect example. When danger comes, he is in Suddha Sattva, fourth level. Krishna became so heavy. Of course, the reason Krishna became heavy because Krishna wants to be separated from his mother so he can fly on the sky. And how is going to, he asked his mother, mother, those birds are flying because the birds seeing Krishna's beauty, they got, they forgot where they were going and they just going round and round and round on the front yard of Nanda Maharaj's house. And they cannot stand because there's no space, you know, it's only a space, there's no branches or trees or anything. And they don't want to stop looking at Krishna, so they're going. Krishna thought, okay, I'll go there and give my association to them. So they will be delivered. So he asked his mother, can I fly? So mother, of course, out of affection, she said, you silly, human, don't fly. So then, <laughs> but when Krishna desires something, he's going to do it. But how he does it, it's a pastime, we call. So all of a sudden, Trinavarta just about to appear. So then Krishna became so heavy, Mother Jasuda felt something, some ghost or something happened. So she does three things. She trying to protect the child, at the same time praying to Narayan for his protection and engaging Brahmanas to do the jagna. We can learn. This is how we become uh, in that aligned. Not that we are spaced out. Okay, Krishna will take care. Just like they did in India. I don't know if you ever heard Kalapahar, maybe. Kalapahar was a Brahman who became a Muslim and he, he attacked the Hindu temples. And I was reading his pastimes one time and it gave me a clear idea that how a devotee can be naive or, or not understanding the philosophy properly. Kalapahar came with seven people to a big temple. And there's a 2,200 pujaris. They all started praying, oh God, protect us from him. He is a very dangerous. And our grandfather, uh, Bhakti Siddhan Shakur, he says, if they would just stand up with a stick, what these seven people could do? So their idea is one philosophy. Their idea, it's like a cat and kitten. The God is like a mother cat, and we are pujari, we are devotee like a kitten, baby kitten. We don't know how to protect ourselves. The mother kitten will come and take the baby kitten. Mother cat will come and take the baby kitten somewhere. And then there's another group, still today, in South India, these two groups are there. One is called Markar, one is called Marja. The other group is, they believe they want to follow the style of a monkey. When danger comes, <clears throat> the, the baby does everything. What is this? Holding, grabbing the mother. And mother jump from branch to branch. Mother is not trying to protect the baby. But because baby is holding, the Mahaprabhu says we need to do both, not just one. The complete surrender means both. We have to do what we can do. Just like Jayadrata. When, a good example, when Arjuna saw his son was brutally killed, he took a bow that by tomorrow before sun said, I'm going to kill Jayadrata. And Krishna heard this. Krishna says, you have taken a serious bow. How are you going to do it? Jodhrata is not an ordinary soldier. And Arjuna gave a perfect answer. This is the mood we need. He said, Krishna, you know how much power I have. I'm just an ordinary soul. But I know what power you have. In both connection, combination, we can win. And next day when it happened, Arjuna almost failed, but he had a strong faith. I, I'm doing my best. He did his best. 
is failing, but Krishna created the whole pastime, you know, that how Krishna created and he won. So we have to do our best and Krishna will do his part. This is called fourth so, dimension, so pure goodness. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I got the distinction between goodness, because you said goodness, when a person is in the mode of goodness, they a person is coming at them with a knife, they take shelter of Krishna. But in pure of, goodness... Yes, they take shelter of Krishna, but if they... Goodness means, you know, threshold of the door. Goodness yeah. means yeah. you are approaching bhakti. You, are, you have access to the house, but you haven't entered yet. When you entered inside, then it's pure goodness. So goodness is the step we all need, always, every day, as, as much possible. And if you can maintain 24 hours goodness, you are next door to Krishna. You are, you, you are, you'll be eligible to see Krishna again as you progress. Okay, but, but in that example, somebody is coming at you with a knife, right? If you're in mode of ignorance, you escape. Rajas, you try to kill the person in self-defense. And in goodness, I don't know, you take shelter of Krishna by... Well, by you can also me. counsel yourself. You can counsel yourself. It's my bad karma, probably. This is what happened. Oh, Lord. They do counsel themselves. Like Prabhupada says in Teachings of Lord Chaitanya, that book, Prabhupada said one should counsel to his mind every day. Yeah, I saw that. We need to counsel. Mm. So yeah. means they counsel. They don't react, they don't escape. Okay. Like when but there's a the conflict, people... even amongst the devotees, sometimes if there is a conflict, you will see someone don't want to resolve good conclusion. They just, I don't want to talk to that person. That is a uh, Tamagun. Even though he's a devotee, but took shelter of Tamagun. Because he's not dealing with the situation. He wants to Correct. Say, escape. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. And some devotee will be reacting. You are wrong. No, no, I'm not wrong. You are wrong. And they will, this is Rajagun. Play a game of Rajagun. Satagun is, they will be reflecting. Did I do something? Did I do something? What happened? Then if we act on that, Prabhupada said, those who are very advanced, actually they will say, I'm so sorry. Even at the, knowing the fault is in their side, because Prabhupada did that himself. I hope so I did not offend you. Please help me. What did I do that hurted you or something? That's called Saptagun. As soon as they act on it, it's becoming connection with Suddha Sattva. Okay, so when you when you reflect on it, you know, you try to apply the philosophy and so on, that's mode of goodness. But then when you when you apply that philosophy, you know, when that when that reflection, let's say, manifests as action, when you take action based on the Shastra, let's say, then that's mm -hmm. pure goodness. Yes. Is it? Yes. Okay. It's very subtle. So act, act, acting on your introspection, let's say. Well, introspection has acting, to be, you have to yeah. remember, introspection has to be aligned with devotional principle. Yeah, yeah, of course. Then yeah. it is spiritual. Yes, then that's pure goodness, not just mode of goodness, it's pure goodness. Exactly. Otherwise, I may say, oh, I'm so bad. You know, it looks like a wow. It's so nice. Is this pure goodness? And pure? No, I'm glorifying. I'm talking about myself. I'm bad. I am not good. I'm this. I did. I'm talking about me, putting myself. The goodness means they are connecting to Brahman, Krishna. Okay, I am I'm low, 
I'm low and they're advanced, I hope I did, and genuinely they feel. But putting too much of self-pity is not actually humility or goodness. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, once in right. a while, you may see it like this. Mm -hmm. In this world, somebody will say, I'm not good, I just don't want to talk, I'm just all bad, I'm just, Are Baba, why are you talking so much about you? That's right. But it seems like humility, but it's not humility. No, no, no. They are same as the escaper. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing okay, this point. But still, you know, you, you said that, you know, Prabhupada's Murti is like four dimensions, but, you know, for pure devotees, I would have thought, no, only only that fourth dimension and not the other three, not all four. Because, See, you know, they don't operate in the three modes at all. They don't operate, but they are handling with the three modes. Mm. Just like Lord Did Shiva. You? Lord yeah, Shiva yeah. is always in a pure goodness. But he has mm -hmm. to control, he has to control the tamagul, ignorance. Yeah. And in order to control, sometimes he has to uh, get contaminated by it, in a sense like uh, he will fight against Krishna. And then later on he regrets. Of course, Krishna is that way. So sometimes we see, but that's a very rare case. Like Bitra Sura, his Maha, his pure goodness, fourth dimension. But by the cars that he became a demon, Chitra Kitu became a demon, now he, 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 it appears like he's acting as a demon. But those who are advanced, they're seeing his consciousness, even Indra. He was surprised that he's speaking a philosophy that even Indra doesn't understand. That's why it took one year to cut a neck of Chitra uh, Kirti. I mean, Vitra Sura. Because why? <laughs> That's the first time in Bhagavatam that his neck yeah. was such a big demon. But to cut his neck, he could not even cut his neck. It took one year. Finally, he did it. You think like, how? Why take one year to cut? Because the yeah. philosophy is speaking Indo is feeling guilty. Even after the whole thing over, Indo left. He wanted to purify his consciousness. He said he has done horrible things. In the form of demon look, he really looks like a demon form, but inside is a pure fourth dimension Mahabhagavat. The verses he quoted is so advanced. One Acharya says is like a gopi's prayers. Aham Hare Tava Padai Kamula Dasan Dasa Babitas Mibuya Manas Mare Dasa Pate Gunante Gini Tobaka Karmakaro Tokayo. Proper translate When will be the day I will serve you lotus feet under your eternal associate? The prayers he prayed, wow, it's like unbelievable. Indra was like shocked. Is it demon I'm killing or is it like a great Mahajan, great personality? He was builded. Of course, he never experienced the pain actually, you know, when somebody kills you. Next, somebody asked him, like, did he feel pain? No, he left already his body before he even body fell because he was so advanced. But to teach others that Krishna arranged this kind of play. Krishna, once somebody becomes advanced, doesn't mean Krishna does not put him in trouble. Krishna will put sometime advanced devotee in trouble to show the world, to teach the world. Prahlad Maharaj, he had a challenge the moment he opened his mouth about Krishna. Not from outside, within his own family, his own father. We all know that story. So many. Krishna purposely put this just to but not that Krishna neglect them. Krishna never, he always, but through them teaches us how to 
deal with the world. It's not like we become devotee and we think, okay, I become now advanced, no more struggle in life. Everything will be like a green road. You know, in the airport is a green channel. Means you don't have to declare anything. You are like uh, good. Nothing can touch you, something like that. No, not like this. Krishna did not say like that. No verse in, ba uh, in Bhagavad Gita exactly said like this. Rather, it says, uh, there's a famous verse, 1858. I mean, many verses, but that verse is also very famous. Krishna says that Machitta Sarva Durudani Mat Prasad Attari Shashi Atojeta Hankarad Nashushi Binakshashi. That uh, all circumstances may not be grateful, but we can remain or we can be grateful in all circumstances. Krishna is telling us to do that. As I mentioned before, Krishna is saying that I did not promise to the devotee that you will have no, um, your journey on the material ocean will be stormless, means there is no hurricane or anything. No, I didn't say that. Krishna says, Sarva Durgani, means Durgani is a plural, means many obstacles will come in life, even when you become a devotee. But Krishna says, I promise you will have an unsinkable ship, means you will never go drown or you will never go back to Maya. I will protect you. But you will face the storm <laughs> while you are going in the ship. What was that line you said about grateful? Remember just now? Uh, from that verse, we draw some meaning. Prabhupada gave a beautiful purpose that all circumstances, Krishna is saying, that learn from it that all circumstances may not be grateful. It's a true in our life. Mm -hmm. But we can be grateful in all circumstances. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like Prabhupada said, the progression in spiritual life depends on the attitude of the practitioner. That's how Prabhupada put it. Very nice. I think yeah, I, I think very deeply. Prabhupada's talk about it. Yeah, I, I think the idea is that um, is not that challenges stop coming when we become advanced. Is it's just the way we approach the challenges changes. Right? Mm. But that's why I remember, I think in this class I mentioned that we should always remember the simple translation of one sloka. <laughs> Jatana Mahaprabhu says that when we are advancing, what does that mean? It's spiritualizing our consciousness, thinking, our thinking, our feeling, our willing. What does that mean? Means we will start realizing the indestructibility of spiritual reality. And when we spiritualize our consciousness by practicing everyday daily sadhana, such elevation of consciousness increasingly connects us with Krishna. And you can feel, many devotee feels, when that connection becomes steady and strong, even if insecurity afflicts us at material level, we can still relish the supreme spiritual bliss security in Krishna. Bhaktivinoda Thakur said it is necessary. Okay, but Prabhu, um, <clears throat> You know, just returning for a moment to the idea that, you know, when it comes to pure devotees, you know, we shouldn't think, you know, jiva or not jiva because they're Krishna conscious. And so for me, that means that, you know, um, that in terms of tattva, they are jiva. But maybe in terms of 
their relationship with Krishna, then is there, you know, they're the same. It's an accurate way of describing the situation. Like when, when, um, you know, when we become perfected, when and we go from sadhana to you know prema, and we return back to Godhead. Even though we will always be jivas, but we will have our relationship with Krishna, you know, in our swarup. And so, in that sense, you know, we'll be acting on the same level, like with Krishna. They won't be, you know, won't be like God versus, you know infinitesimal being. So I'm just trying to see if I'm understanding this concept properly of, you know, of not making this distinction of jiva versus non-jiva. I don't know if you're getting well, me. Well, yeah. Uh, let's let's uh, uh, talk about uh, atma. Yeah. Jiva atma. Jiva means mm -hmm. that which is alive, life. How do you know something yeah. is alive? What what is alive means? Oh, alive means it has has desire, will, feelings. Exactly. Sentience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So at the core of our existence, we are eternally alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. that is we call in English constitutional level. Constitutional level means it will never change. Mm -hmm, yeah. It will eternally stay alive. At constitutional level, if I am existing at this moment right now, there are eight symptoms we all have. So let's check. You don't have to say it. Nobody has to say it. You can check on your own because we don't need to judge anybody. This is in Bhagavatam, fifth canto, four chapter, five verse. Prabhupada gives, very nice. When you are Jivan Mukta, you are a soul or conscious being, you have these eight symptoms. And if we see we don't have all these eight symptoms, that means we are not on our origin level, we, are, we became something. We are playing a drama. We are not really a person at home. Drama means you disguise, you take a role and you disguise a new form. So these are the eight. The slogan goes, if I recall, Atma Apahata Apna. I don't have any desire to do sinful activities. So that's number one. If I don't have this, that means I am actually a soul. Second, bijara. Bijara means I don't see myself dying. I see my body is falling apart, but I am not dying. I'm not afraid of that. Means consciously we are at the constitutional level. It's not even Krishna conscious, just the basic uh, uh, soul conscious, mm -hmm. what is called Jiva. So that time, mm -hmm. no sinful activity, number one. Number two, you don't feel like you're dying, means you don't think you are this body of a girl or boy. No, you see your spirit. You see the indestructibility of spiritual reality. It's true. Third, Bhimrittu. You do not see anybody can cause you death or finish, diminish. Deep sleep, like some idea of Nirvan, one group in Canada, I know Richard, he told me, they, they like this deep sleep idea. Deep sleep means you go to a sleep where your thinking, willing, feeling is not there, no trace, nothing, they just like it. I say, how do you know you like it? So when we wake up, we feel good. I say, no, that you experience after you wake up. But what if you never wake up? How do you know? There's no record. Who is the experiencer? The soul is not like that. But you can pray for it. Krishna will put you into deep sleep. But that's not soul's natural condition. Soul's natural condition is 
joyful, alive. So that's Bimitu. Then Bishuko. Bishuko no, but wait a minute. No, no, no. I'm sorry. But number three, I didn't. So, because number two, you feel like, you know, you're indestructible spirit, so you don't have any sense of death. Mataji, he, you also write this number, Bhagavatam 5.4.5. You can read later also. Five, four, five. Okay. The first is mm -hmm. no sinful inclination. I, yes. Second is you don't see you are diminishing. Yes. Third is you're not afraid of death. In a simple way yeah. to look at it. Okay. Fourth is, you have no lamentation. You know, I wish I was, when I was young, I would have done, done this. I wish I, it, this kind of lamentation, you're like, ah, nothing you need. You just saw a movie of yourself, this life. You know, you're not interested to participate in that movie, whatever past. Then you are at the mm -hmm. soul level. Then number mm -hmm. five, mm -hmm. Fiji, Fiji Gatsa. You're not thinking, you know, I wish I would, that one is lamentation and one is fascination for future. I wish I could get some hormone, they say, uh, what do you call it? genetic hormone that you don't, you can prolong your lifespan. You're not fascinated either. Neither for the past, nor for the future. Because you see as a soul eternal. But the other two also you have to examine that you it's not lingering in your thought. Because in this world, the three dimension, some people actually live by the past. I saw, you can see, go outside and talk to someone. How are you, are you okay? Yeah, you know, my brother used to take care of me. Now he doesn't, you know, he's gone. They're lamenting. They're lamenting. I lamented when my mother died. I thought I was lamenting for her, but then I was lamenting for myself. Why? Because she used to cook for me. She was doing all these things. And I was thinking like, I'm a selfish guy. I miss my mother for me. But what about her as a soul? So I did little austerity. Akadoshi and other and gave her all the credit. Because I was not missing her for her as a servant of Krishna. I was missing what she did for me. And majority of people in this world lament like this. Then comes Apipasha. Apipasha means you not whole lingering that you want to enjoy something next life or somewhere, heaven or somewhere, like some uh, unfulfilled, do uh, dormant exploration. This is a big deal. Most of the people don't even think, but deep down in their heart, when the opportunity comes, they will do it. Who does this? Can he does. You know how Gyani became Jogi, original? Because of this idea. They did not purify their consciousness and they fall for this. So the Gyana means they are searching throughout the literature, Shastra, finding the knowledge. Then they found, okay, I can liberate myself from all this trouble. I remember how I advanced last life, went to heaven and fell down. I, I just don't want to do this again. Merry go round, round. I don't want. I want to stop. Just get out of all this. So there's Gani idea. When they pursue, pursue, but they didn't purify their enjoyment spirit. They didn't take shelter of pure bhakti. So what happened? When they search, they search and they find, oh, if you can meet the Paramatma and you will get your liberation at the same time through Paramatma, you can get all these eight mystic siddhi. You could enjoy without working for it. You could create a girl or you could create a boy and enjoy with that and the boy has no relation with you or girl has no relation with you. They do in the higher planet. 
These are sound dormant. a little bit like hankering, but okay. These are dormant. These are not commonly visible. These are dormant. I was talking mm -hmm. to one person in San Diego, old old man, and when we asked that question, they said, "If you are given a chance, 17 years old, you're going to be 18. You have a license of freedom. What would you do?" He said, "I didn't do something. I want to do all this." And before one hour, he's talking, the life is good, everything is just done with it. All of a sudden, he just, when we changed, we became familiar, he actually revealed. Dormant, in the dormant, there is a latent position, unfulfilled desire. Only bhakti mm -hmm. can purify. But those who have not taken bhakti seriously, it's still there lingering. Recently, mm -hmm. uh, we had a course, and one of the Mayavadi um, teacher he wrote something very interesting. He says that when somebody takes sannyas, they are very serious when they take sannyas. But problem is, 40 years to 60 years is the reflection what hurts a person the most, because that time they have a lingering of dormant desire pups. And we see, even in Ishkan, is very interestingly, that age, actually many of them step down. Mm. It's very interesting. We were like reflecting and we we're discussing for a couple hours. Like this is such a serious matter. Even though it's Mayavadi Jyoti, uh, he became a Vaishnava, then he wrote this book about uh, when somebody, when they, in America, they call midlife crisis, something like that. But it's not exactly like it, but that book gives elaborate explanation. And every man and woman, they think sometimes at that age, when they're approaching 35, going to 40, 38, 39, they think, I want to be serious. I want to be serious. I want to be serious. Also, they see that unfulfilled desire, like, oh, nothing we can do about it. Ignore it. Put it under carpet. But it's not gone. It's under carpet. Well, nobody is seeing it, okay, but it's still under carpet. It's lingering. It will pop if the opportunity comes. Controlling senses is one thing, but facility is another thing. If Sanas is giving facility, if the devotee is giving facility for enjoying license enjoyment with billion dollar and facility, maybe they will slacken their Krishna consciousness will go for it. Why? Is still there. It's in Those verses are giving, the idea is there. Okay, I'm sorry, I went off too much far. So, no, number okay. six, no, right? No, number seven now, I think. Number seven? Because, number six. Sattva Kama means you only desiring to serve the Lord. You don't want any other desire. Sometimes we feel like this. I don't want any. I want to serve, chant, I want to serve. That means we are coming to the soul level. Easy to pick up Krishna consciousness from there. Easy. But it, it goes back after a little while. Oh, there's a movie, new movie came. Okay, maybe we can watch. No, I don't want to watch it. So you go like back and forth like this. Then Satta Sankalpa, the eight number is Satta Sankalpa, means they really take a strong bow and they want to stay in Bhakti path. And more details you can read also in Prabhupada's Parpur very nicely. Mm -hmm. And at, when somebody at the soul level actually perform devotional service, whatever they are desiring spiritually, it will manifest even. It manifests mystically. When they are at the eighth level, whatever eighth they level. desire. These are the eight symptoms of the soul. Not a yes. pure devotee, it's just the liberated, because soul is eternally separated from the material. So what are the symptoms of the soul? Or oh, these are the eight symptoms of the soul. 
and we can all check exactly whether we are in a soul level or conditional level. And we go back and forth, back and forth. This is called cognitional level. It helps. So like that. But you know, if you're, if you're at the soul level, you said at number seven, you only desire to serve Krishna, but Maybe once Not in, a while, in a that might... sense only, it's a favorable way to please Krishna. So a person you, who is on... it, it's, it, it, Krishna consciousness, we have to understand, Krishna consciousness is not automatic. Krishna consciousness is also intention. You remember all those cartoons, even Prabhupada's time there was a cartoon. <clears throat> The lady said, or the man said, I forgot. It says, chant, chant, chant. And he answered, can't, can't, can't. Mm -hmm. And Prabhupada even quoted this. The chant, 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 and can't, can't, can't. And then somebody put a cartoon like this. It's very interesting. And why? Then Prabhupada says, Krishna consciousness is not automatic. It is intentional. We have to see our attitude, our intention that we want to chant. Even there is one Mataji told to Prabhupada that I told my mother so many good things came out, but one bad thing came also. One Mataji said to Prabhupada, I told my mother, uh, Mother, please, you, you are about to leave this world. Just say Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. And the mother replied, It's too many letters, too many words, I can't. And she died. So is it automatic? No. Krishna consciousness. This is a myth. People really think Krishna consciousness is like automatic. No, it's not automatic. Intention. We have to yeah, develop intention. a desire to become devotee. But I just feel that, you know, if if you are on the on the level of the soul, you know then you will always have that desire to serve. Yes. But in, in number seven, you said, you know, that is there, but once in a while you might want to go to a movie. So how is that one of the oh, symptoms? Be <laughs> because <laughs> just like you're riding a car and you have a bad weather, well, the weather has an influence. You can take the influence or you can just close the window and stay inside the car while driving and you're not bothered of talking about it. But you can, you have access. Soul doesn't mean soul is completely pure at that time. Soul is, I mean, in one sense is spiritual, but soul is also Mm, defined by thinking, willing, feeling, the quality. Now, the thinking, willing, feeling, if it is going from soul level, well, I want to eat ice cream. I like pesta sunat. I'm not thinking of Krishna or offering them. This can come. Mm -hmm. So that means uh, so, I'm going uh, it, from mm -hmm. constitutional to conditional. But then, so it makes, conditional mm -hmm. in the middle comes, wait, why don't you offer it? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. So now it's become spiritualized. So we are going like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in number seven, the, the, the material thought or desire may come, but you won't act on it. And As a eight, soul level, you may not, but soul doesn't mean, unless it's completely pure, he can fall for it. Mm. See, we have to understand we are product of our own decision. We have a conscious choice all the time while we are here. Eternally, we have a conscious choice. But in spiritual world, they say conscious choice is like whether you want to massage Krishna's left arm or right arm. A still choice is there. Uh, but here, we have a choice whether we want to watch a Krishna conscious movie or a Kormi movie. Yeah. Okay, Prabhu. Prabhu, yeah, that was such such a wonderful, um, so many wonderful points you made. But I just, a very quick question, I hope. 
um, you know, you said this is, a, I'm just changing a little bit. You know, you were you saying that um, the, pure, the pure devotee, he has Krishna in his heart. And so when it comes to carving the deity, you know, he projects, you know, the Krishna that he has in his heart onto that material, you know, the wood, the, whatever it is. Yeah, and, and we call that pranpatishta, right? So, when he invites, when he invites when he, the Lord to accept the right. service through that form, yes, that's called pranpatishta. But now, when sometimes we go to these um, like installation ceremonies that are conducted mm-hmm. by priests, you know, and let's say that the priest may not be, you know pure devotee but they are performing the ceremony and so how how is that how could competition actually take place if you know if if it's being conducted by priests who you know they, they may be sincere devotees you know but they're not if they're not yet on that level you know of being completely pure then how is that prompetition going to actually happen? We can look at few other way. If someone is serious to uh, seriously following Srila Prabhupada's instruction, he is following pure process. And for the pleasure of Prabhupada, the deity will come and accept. Deity himself mm-hmm. says, it is the Lord, he says, Bhaktir Bhakta Jana Priya. Sadhava Grasta Hidayo Bhaktir Bhakta Jana Priya. Bhaktir Bhakta, I love the servant of my servant. And I will accept their offerings. Yes. Naiva Atmana Prabhu Nija Lava Purna. Manav Jana Vidasa Karuna Vrinite. Karuna Vrinite. Because he has a compassion. Karuna, he will accept. Because he following a pure devotee. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That's a very nice question. You have a very thoughtful, very nice mm. question. Well, you gave you give wonderful answers, Prabhu. Thank you so much. By the mercy of Guru Krishna and Prabhupada. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Oh, wow, it's almost we are now two hours. Yes. Thank you, Gorangi for asking all the questions. It's benefit to us also. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, we can end the call, Prabhuji. Uh, maybe we can meet okay. again. Let us Thank be our respectful obeisances you. to all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord, who can fulfill the desire of everyone, just like desire tree, who are full of compassion for the fallen condition. So, Kancha Kalpa Turuvesha, Deepa Sindhu Bhai Vacha, Padita Anam Pavani Prabhuji. Nantakari Vaishya Bindaki Jai. Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Shila Gurudev ki jai, Gaur Pramana. His grace, Pran Govinda Prabhuji ki jai. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Prabhuji, wonderful class. Thank you so much.